Well, that was an awful run, but uh, 16k points and a new collection log slot. The Torn Prayer Scroll, which is great, so we can just read that right now. And that will unlock the Preserve Prayers. 20k C, 52 minute. There, not too bad at all. And a Torn Prayer Scroll and some Dragon Arrows. Okay, so we found our method now of being able to get um one death completions and by one death completions i mean by just dying at home so that i get some extra supplies but if you actually check the supplies that we did have left over as you can see we have a stamina potion we still have a full overload three re revitalations and six xerix aids so we're on our way of definitely improving and uh that's 26 kc 20 almost 26 000 points yeah not too bad Okay, so I'm a little more confident in doing raids than I definitely was like a few weeks ago. So I was running out of the crystal charges for the crystal armor, and I thought, what can I use in my bank so I don't have to go get more of those shards right now? And I thought void would be a perfect option. Now, if you look at the void range gear that I take, it will provide me a 15.5% bonus to damage and 10% to accuracy. Now, all I have to do is switch the helmet out, and i guess like that and it would realistically become a melee variant and this will provide a 10 percent bonus to melee damage and accuracy and the same for magic if i want to do magic this is where it's huge it um will provide a 45 percent bonus to my magic accuracy which is incredible for Ulm, and only a 2.5% to damage, but the accuracy kind of makes the damage more anyways. So what I'm doing now is like reloading raids until I find like an ideal one that's worth doing. It does take a while. All right, we found an ideal kind of raid. Not the best, but like definitely not the worst either. So we're just going to start this off, and the first room is Guardians. Already like what I see, we've got an alien guy here and a farming room, so we've got potions. What we can immediately do is go to the bank chest, deposit the things that we're not going to be using at the moment, which is probably the stamina's, I don't know what else. Melee gear equipped, dragon spec, and time to fight off the guardians. Probably should have got some more run energy before we did this, but uh... Yeah, this might be a slow fight. I couldn't be asked, so I got run energy, and basically what you do for the guardian room is just attack and then run away, and you want your pickaxe on the smash. It's really that easy, you just want to not be hit by the falling boulders, or by the guardians themselves, so if you run away, or click them and then run away instantly, you should be, you should avoid all of that. More than enough potions made. I'm gonna say muted house right now anyways is my least favorite room i haven't tackled like versa or whatever the other v one is uh i just hate these guys you know you have to chop down the tree take a lot of damage and then just try and kill the boss so an overload definitely helps here The big muted dial down, which is one of the most annoying bosses that I've found so far. Let's go. Next here we have the thieving room, which is probably, like I said, my favorite room in all of raids. So basically all you have to do is raid these chests. Lockpick helps you like get them more successfully all the time. Really doesn't matter, to be completely honest with you, if you have it or not. Um, you just want to raid all of these chests, and eventually you want to deposit the the worms into this little trow right here, and it will eventually kill off the guy. So just keep doing that until you kill this corrupted scavenger. Yep, that guy's dead easy. Now, Tecton is not easy. Um, I really don't know the exact way to do it properly. I know you're supposed to like r walk around him like in a circle or something, but I haven't been doing that at all. I've kind of just been like winging it in a way. So I'll show you the way that I've been doing Tecton. Like I said, definitely not the most efficient way that you could be doing it. So I started off with uh, 
Pidey and Prey Melee, and I equip my uh, Bando's God Sword. We walk up to him, and hopefully we land. Nope. And no, two two shitty spe two specs that didn't land anything. So then I just put on the Fang, and kind of just keep switching to try and avoid his attacks, and hope for the best. Really, like, uh, yeah. Definitely one of the rooms I could improve on quite a bit. I really don't even know the like meta to do Tecton. I know you're supposed to like walk around in a circle, but I haven't really been doing that. I've just been kind of winging it like I've said. But anyways, Tecton, done. Now for the Ice Demon room, you want to put your mage gear on and basically chop a bunch of the kindling. Pick up a tinder box, which is spawned here. There also is an axe, which is spawned here as well, which can be nice and helpful if you have this before, say, the Mutadal room and you didn't bring an axe, but yeah, you want to get a bunch of kindling, light up the braziers, and then eventually fight the boss when he gets... You, you light the braziers in this blue little um, bar eventually goes down. So as you can see, it's starting to go down, but the more wood you get into it, the better, and the faster this bar will go down. The ice demon itself is pretty easy. You basically want to put on prey range, and your magic prayer and then just fight them with some fire spells we could use the trident or some people even said you could use the uh blow pipe some other people said you could use the um the bofa it really doesn't matter i just found fire spells to work effectively you get hits all the time you could like i said even just use the trident if you want to with oh fuck we're misclicking quite a bit but you just want to just run around, try and avoid his little snowball effect, and try and do DPS to the boss. We're not hitting. We are definitely not hitting. Stamina potion could definitely help here if you want to, I guess, waste one. But it's the ice demon, man. It's pretty easy. You can you can do this without run energy, like realistically. You you will take a bit of damage, but it's easy. Like once you get the hang of it. Okay, so if you've made it to all, congratulations, let's go. Um, basically, I do the suicide method right now where I take an overload, a uh, prayer enhance. I take actually six revitalization potions. I take a stamina potion and then I fill the rest of the inventory up with the Xerix aids or whatever you want to call them. And then I head into the boss room and I purposely die. So I drop an overload. I drop a prayer enhance, I drop all of the revitalization potions in one spot, I drop the stamina, and I drop the rest of the Xerix aid, so this will give me some extra food and some resources to help me later on in the fight when I know I'm going to need it. This really helps honestly when learning, and I can't recommend it enough because you get most of the points during the raid at the Ulm fight himself. So if you can die less at home and more during the regular parts of the raid, you're better off. Now, I'm not skilled enough to commentate over my home fight yet. I'm just going to put it at really high speed and hope hopefully you guys can kind of like take some inspiration from this. I'm still getting hit a ton, I'm not doing the perfect timing and whatever it is, and I'm still getting a lot of spe specials and whatever it is, and I really don't know how to actually properly do the fight yet, but we can still do it.
Okay, and just like that, barely anyways, we got uh, 27 KC, 23.9K points, and some pure essence, and some teak planks, 240K. But anyways, that is 23,000 points solo at the Chambers of Zarek with the Suicide Method. Hopefully we can learn and get a little bit better and eventually do the regular method where we don't even have to suicide and we can get like 30k points. But as you can see, we have definitely learned quite a bit since the last video. We're actually able to get consistent kills now at like 23 to 25 26,000 points per raid which if you solo it it's around 31 to 32,000 points so realistically we're not too far off every 8,000 8, 8.6 something like that points is 1% chance at a purple so we're rocking at least a 2% chance per purple every single raid so yeah we're getting better and 27 kills now which is beautiful I can't wait to just do this content and grind the hell out of it and eventually maybe even get ourselves something like the twisted bow right now i'm aiming for the rigor prayer and even the dragon hunter crossbow would be an extreme upgrade which would just make the, the run so much smoother and so much easier but uh yeah anyways thank you guys so much for watching the video today let me know down in the comments below if you want me to keep posting the progression that i'm having with the raids it has been a lot of fun lots have been learned i've just been absolutely studying it like while i'm at my uh while i'm at work i'm on my break looking up like ohm guides and stuff like that learning different types of methods to do at certain phases of the fight just i'm just studying the hell out of it it's really taken over my life right now but anyways thank you guys and i will catch you in the next video see ya later and obviously this can happen which is absolutely insane getting a purple with a death